Uh, and in case we had forgotten anything about Sarah, the next verse, verse 11, reminds us, Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age, and it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. I love how that's put. They were well stricken in age. To be stricken makes it sound like it's some kind of horrible disease. And well, sometimes it feels that way. The older I get, the more strickener and strickener I feel, right? But it ceased to be with her after the manner of women. Well, ceased to be, it never started. If you remember last week, the first time we meet Sarah, back in chapter 11, the first thing we know is that she's barren. And in case we don't know what that means, he reiterates it, she couldn't have any kids. We talked about that last week, that what a painful irony to be defined by what you lack instead of what you can offer. And to be defined by your barrenness when you are the second half of a covenant couple that is to be defined by their posterity. Remember this sense of, I am the weak link in the chain. I am what's getting in the way of God keeping his promises. I'm the obstacle. And what... And what am I supposed to do? Well, again, this reminder, stricken with age, ceased to be after the manner of women. But that's, she's not the issue here. The power of God and the timing of God, the will of God, that's the issue. And to borrow that same phrase, it never ceases to be with God after the manner of God. He is a God of miracles and will never stop being that. That's how the Book of Mormon ends, right? That if there's no miracles, it's not on God, it's on us. What's happened to our faith? Because He is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and He is a God of miracles. Again, it will never cease to be with Him after His own miraculous and tender mercy, loving, generous way. But Sarah is wondering, is that even possible? Now, if you remember last week, when, when Abraham is first told that, he laughs. And he's like, are you kidding me? No, it's good. It's good. I, we, through Hagar, I have Ishmael. I have a son. You can keep your covenant. Uh, it's going to be okay. Well, Sarah responds in the exact same way. But the Lord calls her out on it. It's really interesting. Verse 12, therefore Sarah laughed within herself. And, and that idea of laughter is an interesting thing because, she, like I said, she gets called out on it. In the next verse, the Lord says, wait, wait, why did Sarah laugh? And then a few verses later, she's like, I, I, I didn't laugh. And he's like, oh, no, no, you laughed. You definitely laughed. And she said that she didn't because she was afraid. So with all that language surrounding Sarah's laughter, it does suggest there's something deeper here. When you see something in Scripture, uh, again, here's some skill sets to, to, for us to work on. When you see something that keeps coming up, or that there seems to be an emphasis, emphasis in Scripture, it behooves us to, to pause there and try to dig a little deeper. So what's up with Sarah laughing? Now, on the one hand, this is going to make for a beautiful play on words in Hebrew, since the name Isaac means to laugh or to rejoice. It's like, oh, oh you, you Isaac. So, no, no, I didn't Isaac. No, no, you did Isaac. Uh, and that's okay, because Isaac will come as a result, okay? But again, something more about this laughter. To me, it's as if the Lord is saying, Sarah, my promises are not a laughing matter. Trust me on this one. But then again, maybe they are. Maybe Sarah knew more than she realized and did something more, more appropriate than any of us could imagine. Maybe laughter was the exact response that was, that was required at that moment. And here's why. There's something about laughter in terms, well, let's put it this way, comedies or, or tragedies, okay? You Shakespeare scholars uh, or fans, take your pick. The interesting thing about tragedy is, well, every life, every story, every play has its ups and downs, right? But tragedies are defined by the fact they end on a bad note. I mean, you're leaving in tears of sorrow. It's like, I can't believe that happened to them. Whereas comedies, no matter how many ups and downs there are throughout the story, it always ends with a smile on your face. It ends in joy, in rejoicing, in laughter. Comedies reassure us, no matter what happens, this will have a happy ending. And in many ways, Sarah's life and Abraham's life has been almost an unmitigated tragedy, especially from Sarah's standpoint all that she's been through. And for her to laugh about this promise is a sign to us all 
This story is a comedy, not a tragedy. It will end. If tears, maybe, but tears of joy, tears of laughter rolling down your cheeks. You're about to Isaac, and all of us have a happy ending. I've, I've told my students this, that permanent bad news is against my religion. I do not believe that, that the plan of salvation ends in tragedy. I, I believe it ends in glorious triumph, which makes life a comedy. Now, sometimes it's a comedy of errors, right? But there are, is plenty of time for comic relief. And in some ways, Sarah here is being provided through this son of promise, her comic relief. I read a book once about Sarah, and it called her the mother of all laughter. We, we met Eve as the mother of all living. Well, Sarah is the mother of all laughter. And there's something about this divine laughter that reminds us that all will, all will be well. There's cause to rejoice. Viktor Frankl, the great Jewish psychologist and psychoanalyst that, was, that survived the concentration camps in World War II, he defined or described laughter as one of the soul's weapons in the fight to, to preserve hope and life. Laughter, the ability to laugh pulls you out of the immediate moment and proves that I know this isn't all there is. I know there's something better. I have something to laugh about, despite this veil of tears. Uh, Reinhold Niebuhr was a, was a 20th century, century theologian, and he said there's a lot more similarity between laughter and faith than we sometimes realize. That laughter deals with life's small incongruities where faith deals with life's larger ones. And sometimes the one can, can morph into the other. So maybe, just maybe, God's promises really are a laughing matter. Something to rest assured in and hold out hope for. Because this will have a happy ending. Sarah, you laughed. No, oh, I didn't. Yes, you did. And that's okay. It's time. It's past time. It is time for you to rejoice. And by next year, you will be Yitzhakin all the time. You will be Isaacing. Literally. Imagine that. Every time she calls her son to the dinner table, uh, with or without Abraham's uh, in instructions on how to cook dinner, uh, she will just remember, this is my son of rejoicing. This is my comic relief.